Channel is Tony Doddy, 24-7 Eyes. Uh, sometimes we like to look at stories which aren't directly political, but have what I would say uh, political uh, connotations. And uh, they have so many talking points that we have to look at them. We can't ignore them. Uh, I thought we'd invite uh, the Washington Post has described our guest, uh, Megan Kenneth, as the most important legal influencer in America. So uh, it is nice that we can have uh, an accurate voice because with a lot of these stories, specifically, we're going to talk about the Jonathan uh, uh, Major situation. Uh, there's a lot of tittle tattle and gossip and we get far away from the point. So, uh, Megan, welcome. Can I ask, first of all, can you just give us the back history uh, of this case, please? <clears throat> Uh, yeah, this started uh, really not that long ago, this year, March 25th, uh, 2023, in New York City, in Manhattan. That's where uh, Jonathan Majors was living with Grace Jabari at the time. So this was a pretty quick turnaround in terms of a trial, but it's also a misdemeanor case. And actually, one of his charges was less than a misdemeanor. It was a violation. So these are the kind of cases that we would usually see resolved. And we don't typically see high-profile misdemeanor trials in the United States, but of course, this was an exception, just being who Jonathan Majors is, because really his his career was really on the line over this. That's what uh, the, the stakes were. If people were hoping if he'd been found not guilty, his his fans were hoping that his career would be saved. But obviously, we saw what happened with Marvel yesterday, parting ways with him shortly after the conviction. So this was a a, a rare, high profile misdemeanor trial. Let's get to the case in a moment. Can I just ask one technical point? Because I'm still trying to get, I'm a Brit looking in, getting my head around it. There were no cameras allowed. Why in this specific case were no cameras allowed? Uh, those are the restrictions in uh, Manhattan criminal court. They don't allow cameras inside the courtrooms. That's just a courthouse policy, but they do allow wide press access. The fact that you're able to photograph the defendants going in and out of the hallways and actually film in the hallways is uh, not something I've experienced, at least in the courthouses I cover in California. And you can actually, uh, if you have uh, media credentials, you can have your laptops in there to take notes. So I think that is great public access. And I think some people kind of lose sight of uh, of of the need for for more measured public access when they just want all cameras in courtroom all the time. And they don't realize that having the ability to take notes on a laptop is huge. And then having the, the camera ability in the hallway is pretty great. Now, as you mentioned with this Jonathan Majors case, it's, he's got a, uh, a fan base that has taken an active interest in it. How does that affect those that are actually, you know, at the working end of a case of this? When it's so high profile, everybody's analyzing it and looking at it. Uh, once they're in the court, do they shut that all out or does it have any level of bearing in your opinion? It, it, it they, they are instructed, the jurors are instructed not to read anything about the case, consume anything about the case. And for the most part, from the, the clerks that I know who actually deal with jurors think that jurors take that very seriously. And, and one thing I noticed about the coverage here is there's so much widespread interest in the Jonathan Majors case, but it seemed like a lot of the coverage was very uh, niche based. You wouldn't see anyone commanding the wide audience. So a lot of his supporters and his really vehement uh, fans who were saying that she was being falsely accused were doing a lot of coverage, but it didn't seem like they were reaching the, the wide, wide audience that was actually interested in this. And I think it's it's safe to say that that was kept out of the courtroom, but really we don't know until we actually talk to the jurors. But I think it's, it's safe to find people in America who aren't tuned in to a specific Twitter thread or maybe aren't even on social media about this case. Can we just talk about a couple of things that did happen uh, in the court? Uh, this is some of the evidence. Uh, was it phone footage which was used, uh, which is becoming more and more prominent in these uh, high profile cases? There were some photos of her injuries that were uh, uh, clearly taken by her cell phone. And then there were some text messages that obviously came through the iPhone. But the bulk of the videos that we saw, the key video evidence was surveillance footage, which is kind of another testament to the, the era that we're living in. But uh, investigators were able to basically piece through their their footsteps uh, all through Manhattan. They were able to trace their actions from them leaving the penthouse on the evening of March 24th to go out to actually trace them to the SUV incident a little after midnight on March 25th. They, the camera actually got a pretty good angle of what happened when they were coming out of the SUV. So uh, really, we, we saw quite a bit of that, although we did not have <clears throat> cameras inside the SUV 
to see what happened. We were able to see a lot of before and after from this whole incident. And really the, the harassment violation that he's charged with is on camera that he was convicted of. Now, to me, there's an awful lot of what I recall a uh, trial by social media, trial by the fans. How much similarity, I mean, other people have brought this up, is there between the uh, Amber Heard, uh, a Johnny Depp case to this case as well? And also in terms of uh, Marvel, you know, did Marvel have this kind of mapped out whichever way it went? I, I did see a lot of interest from some of the same people who showed interest in the Depp her trial, and I think that's part of just the internet culture and 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 the group and the friendships that they formed online through that. So there was there was some similarities there that I that I saw. And uh, and, and and what was your what was your other question? Well, it's almost like because when we have uh, this trial and judgment by social media, there's a lot of what about it. Now, I could just think of on a political nature, the Gene Carroll uh, Trump scenario, he hasn't had his career suddenly withdrawn. Why is it, particularly with majors? I mean, it's that from what I can work out, that's it. There is no going back. Is that the way Marvel see it? Uh, yeah, I, I think with Marvel being associated with, you know, kids comic books and in Disney, the idea that even if he'd been acquitted on this, I think with just some of the information that had come out, some of the text messages, the recordings of him, I'm not I, I'm not sure if Marvel would have would have taken him back there. But, you know, I'm also interested to see what exactly happens with his career, because it, it seems like, you know, maybe he could be quiet for a couple of years and then reemerge. I mean, not being somebody who works in crisis communications in the in the film industry, I'm not quite sure what people are would be telling him right now about what his career prospects are. Is there some chance that he can he can eventually rebound after a few years? I mean, not with Marvel. That's a huge thing that was lost that I don't think is is coming back. But you know, I I, I think his career right now the the future of his career is still uh, in question in in terms of what exactly are we going to be seeing him doing i remember talking to you may or may not there's a guy called uh, john beges who uh, john beges who is um john boyage's lawyer and he was saying it's almost like the minute you get the role uh, they do so much due diligence where was marvel's due diligence could did they not know the person did they not know who majors is i mean surely they must do some level of what's this guy like in his private life what's he like uh you know what are the relationships about the reason i cite that as well if you look at uh, tom holland uh you know i've interviewed tom holland yeah, inside and out before he came even close to the role of spider-man they knew everything about him what happened here with Marvel? I mean, is there any le legal uh, due diligence which happens in the movie industry from what you know? Um, I, you, I think I think that there would be, but you know, he was such a rising star and they had success in the the Kang the Conqueror role that he played that I I, I think the 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 information that we have now is new as of March 25th. We we did have a, a big Rolling Stone investigation after March 25th that talked to a lot of people in the film industry about some past issues with him, some past uh, accusations of violence, domestic violence. But we hadn't heard that uh, before March 25th. And sometimes how these things work is uh, one incident like this, a high profile incident uh, coming, somebody coming forward and accusing a high profile person could lead to other people being more comfortable and to, to speak at least anonymously, or at least to speak to Rolling Stone about past incidents that, you know, maybe this exposed things that people weren't, comp weren't talking about publicly before. You just tipped on something there. Do you think we can expect to see more of these high profile cases uh, coming through uh, in um, you know, 2024? And when I say that, maybe cases which have happened uh, some time ago. If I look, for example, the situation with uh, uh, Diddy and Cassie, I mean, that happened some time ago. Do you think now people are looking at what's going on and saying, oh, this happened to me. I'm going to go to court over this. Yeah, we did see a swell of lawsuits at the uh, end of the year here in the United States, especially in a uh, New York state uh, court based on uh, a, 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 an act that it allowed adult survivors to uh, extend the statute of limitations. So that has created a lot of a lot new of new lawsuits. And I think over the last few years, we've seen just kind of a different culture change in the United States. So I do think we could be seeing more of these lawsuits in, in the future. But of course, one, one interesting thing about this is we have not seen a lawsuit with 
uh, Jonathan Majors, at least an active one. This was this was a criminal case. So um, I, I think seeing more seeing more lawsuits is always likely because lawsuits are, are kind of a different breed. But having a criminal case like this can be can be um, can be rare. And I think that's what a lot of people in the U.S. are looking at with Diddy is is there going to be any kind of criminal investigation associated with this at all? Some people are wondering if this could be like a Harvey Weinstein moment for him, but people also with it just being lawsuits, I don't think so. There would need to be an accompanying criminal case against Diddy. And we haven't seen that yet. So just going back to Jonathan Majors, if we can just uh, kind of round up what happens next, I would say legally with him, we kind of work out where his career is to go, which is a, a bit of a mess, but you know, legally, where are the, yeah, where are his next moves? What happens? I do expect that we'll see the typical post-trial litigation that we see in, in California. We would see a, a motion for new trial. We would see all sorts of, of, of challenges before the sentencing occurs. I imagine they have that same procedure in Manhattan criminal court where he was tried. There has to be a way for him to appeal his misdemeanor and violation uh, convictions. And I, his lawyer indicated that they're going to do so. He has a sentencing scheduled for February 6th. And all the talk has always been that he, while he faces up to a year in jail, the likelihood that he's going to get any jail time is pretty slim, especially with being acquitted on two counts and convicted on two counts. So I think there's some thought that, you know, are, are his PR people talking about the benefits of getting this out of the way? I, I think that the statement that they released yesterday, his lawyer released yesterday about wanting to clear his name and seeking uh, seeking an appeal on this indicates that they're going to keep fighting this. But with him not facing jail time, I'm wondering how fast we're going to see a sentencing here, because it's likely the sentencing will be a, a term of probation and some ordered counseling. So it could be the kind of thing where why delay it when every time you delay it, it just leads to more news coverage. But I do think with the post trial stuff that they're going to want to do any kind of appeal, any kind of motion for new trial that could delay the sentencing. So I do think we're going to see a lot of activity uh, going forward, but it really, the, the chances of it, affecting the verdict or overturning the verdict. We don't see that a lot of, a lot in the United States. It does happen, but it, it's not all that common. I mean, just from the outside looking in, it is just, what it's a bit shocking, isn't it? Here we are in 2023 and we have another situation like this uh, where it's, what can I just finally, you know, from putting your, uh, you know, legal, in, what message does this send out? Right now, what message are we sending out? Are we sending out a message that if you're a victim, come forward? Are we sending out a message that if you're the perpetrator, don't worry, bring your legal team and eventually we'll turn a couple of blind eye for a couple of years. You won't be sentenced or whatever. I'm confused in how we should actually look at it because from listening to you, you're giving me two messages almost like, well, in a couple of years time, he could come back and do some independent movie. He won't go to jail. It's like having sort of a broken arm. He's either done something which he should be punished for, surely, or, uh, well, he hasn't. It's, it's a bit sitting on the fence the way I see it. Well, I mean, he's he's definitely being punished for it by by using the Marvel uh, by losing the Marvel thing, mm. getting his career pretty much over. And I think his career is definitely being affected by this. But it's just a matter of are we just never going to see him ever again for the rest of his life when he has this uh, th this career, this these uh, this film resume that I think a lot of a lot of other actors would would desire. I mean, I, I don't think we're going to be seeing him at the Oscars on stage, but the idea that he's never going to be able to act again. I mean, there's different levels of film. Like, I mean, maybe he could end up. I, I mean, I I, I I don't know. I mean, I just think the idea that and Jonathan, it cost Marvel, actually, I don't think Jonathan has Majors is going to have a lot of money. Has it cost Marvel a lot of money? Literally, you know what they've done. Literally, put in a full stuff. Has that cost Marvel a lot of money? Is there any? Yeah. You know, does, does he, you say uh, criminally, but does he actually get hit in the pocket and on any of this? Because it's like somebody somewhere must be a little bit pissed off. Yeah, I, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure if there, if there'd be anything like that. I mean, financially, there's got to be some kind of stuff going on with this contract. But you know, with with Marvel being a uh, not not being a, a, a um, public company, we're not we're not hearing too much about that. But. 
Megan, listen, thank you so much for sparing the time. Hopefully we'll come back to you uh, some more in 2024 because it's really important we get what I call yeah. a real voice that, you know, very complex situations that us from the outside looking in uh, can understand a little bit more clearer with clarity what's going on in these high profile cases. So can I invite you back some other time, please? Absolutely. Absolutely. I love I love tuning in. I'm just kind of kind of in uh, holiday mode. So I hope everybody is is getting into it here. So. Let me be the first person, well, not the first person, I'll say the first person to tell you to wish you a happy Christmas and all the best for 2024, Megan. Yes, you too. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.